Hello in the next episode. In today's video I'm going to repair Xbox One S which came in for the no power repair. So it's got the symptoms that when you press the power button uh, you can hear the sound it comes on for one second and then goes off straight away only one second so you know it can be anything like the hard drive issue it can be the motherboard issue i mean the the power uh, seal could be liquid damaged or you know the problem with the disk drive with the ram memory with the nand memory etc uh, etc et so it can be anything all right so let's check our patient right now all right so this is our xbox i'm going to plug the power cable and just to show you what's going on with this console so when i press the power button i could hear the sound but it doesn't do anything so let me just press one more time all right so now we can't see any light oh yeah we can see you see so now we've got light even more than one second it was maybe three seconds maybe four seconds let me just press one more time and still the same so you know normally what i would do i would just replace the power supply and i will do this now because it can be also the power supply issue because you know normally when we can turn this on and it gives you the light that means we've got all voltages are correct all right so i've got good working power supply power cable let's press the power button once again and still the same we could hear the sound nothing on there you see we've got a light for about three four five five seconds even so it might be also the hard drive issue yeah let's replace the hard drive now it's this xbox without the hard drive it won't show you the picture on the screen so i've got 500 gigs toshiba this is brand new hard drive let's check with the brand new hard drive the hard drive is completely you know it's wiped because it's brand new one let's check now it's again the same it's making the sound so it's still the same all right so as i mentioned at the beginning of this video it can be anything yeah power supply hard drive and the disk drive so what i'm going to do now i'm going to unplug as always the power cable and now i'm going to disconnect the disk drive because you know i've had many situations that the circuit you know the pcb board in the disk drive was faulty and it caused that the power supply cut off the power completely it was similar symptoms one second on on here is a little bit longer than one second all right so i've just removed the disk drive so we can power the console on without the disk drive and it should work so let's power this up oh the power cable three two one and it's still the same and one more thing to remove is just the wi-fi module let's try now still the same i could hear the hard drive was spinning so that mean it it got five volts you know i can turn this on that mean we've got 3.3 volts 12 volts the fan is not spinning so this is the motherboard issue actually and we now we need to figure it out let me disassemble this console quickly
So what I know about this that we've got all voltages are present, are correct. Because you know, otherwise we couldn't just press the power button and it, it wouldn't come on. So that means we have to have all voltages present. So I can just connect my power supply here and the multimeter in the volt mode. All right, so red prop on the ground can be this port whatsoever. And let's check some voltages. We should here, here we should have 12 volts. So let's check this. And we've got 12 volts. That means the power supply is okay. So from this point, you should have every single value. Let's check 3.3 volts. And we've got 3.3, like I said at the beginning. And let's check 5 volts. We've got 5 volts. One more important thing is to find 1.8 standby. We've got 1.8 standby. Do we have 1.1 standby? Yes. So we've got all voltages. Here we've got our RAM memory. We can't see anything on the RAM memory because to see any voltages we just need to turn this on all right so its power is on and goes off like it was beginning so let's put the black probe on the ground and i'm going to put you know what i just need to use one trick just need to take my alligator clips going to attach this to the ground this is the RAM memory, and we should have, this is the DDR3 RAM modules, so we should have here 1.5 volts. So let's turn this on. We've got a light, and we've got 1.5 volts. So we've got all voltages. Let me check the uh, GPU. Here is the GPU point. We've got around one volt. Yes. CPU. And we've got also around one volt. So what can be wrong with it? You've got all voltages. I'm going to unplug the power supply. All right. So that means everything here, except one thing, is no good. So can we figure it out or no? I can see some residue of something. Let me go under the microscope. Okay, so I can see here some signs of something. Maybe just the dust. I don't know. You know, here also. Some kind of residue. Maybe just... Maybe just the dust, I don't know. You know, normally this console doesn't look, look like it was the liquid damage. All right, so let's check the resistance of the RAM memory. Usually in this case, you know, I could see 1.5 volts on the testing point. But I just need to make sure what's the resistance. Of it. Maybe because of the faulty RAM module, the system, you know, cuts off. Let me check. So this is the R. This is not a good result. This tells me that there's some problem with one of the RAM memory. Because I know normally when it's, you know, lower than 30 ohms, it's no good. And, you know, that residue, whatever it was, it was the dust or something like this around those two RAM modules. Maybe this is the reason, yeah. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to inject the voltage to the RAM memory uh, modules. I'm going to inject 1.5 volts and I'm going to have a look at it through thermal camera. So we will see what's wrong with it. So first, let's solder the wire. 
Okay, so the black probe is attached by alligator clips to the USB port and I'm going to connect the jumper wire to the plus. Now I just need my thermal camera and we're ready to go. Let me set up 1.5 volts and 1 amp. All right, so now everything is off. So now I'm injecting 1.5 volts and it's taking 0.15. Can we see anything? We shoot a little bit. Oh, this is the maximum. Let me just adjust my macro lens. And here we've got red spot. Let me just quickly find it where what this is. Alright, so I've got my pointer. And where is that red spot? It's here. It's here. In this corner, actually so it was liquid damaged because it wasn't the dust here it was the liquid i'm gonna make it closer to see it but it's the edge of the this ram memory module exactly in this this is the place where i found the liquid with the dust next to it is all right yeah so there's only one point which is here and it's really very hard to see this point so one so again so this is the one so i'm going to remove that chip i'm going to remove that ram memory i see we will see so now stop injecting the voltage right let's apply some flux I've just removed, you know, that my nozzle tip just to make it quicker. Let's say 400 degrees. I think it's ready to remove. Yes. What would you say? Was liquid damage or no? This is not the flux, definitely. Here it is a flux, but this thing, I don't know. All right, let me just quickly get rid of this solder. I applied my solder straight to the soldering iron tip. Now gently, okay. And now I'm going to use my desoldering wick to remove rest the residue from the board and also gently do not scratch it do not press it too much don't use so much pressure so i'm going to clean this area quickly all right brilliant so now i'm going to put multimeter one probe on the ground and another probe at this point and we've got multimeter in the ohm resistance mode so let's check now And is it's much better. Like I said, you know, if it's lower than 30 ohms, that means it's the RAM memory issue. Probably that module next to it also has to be replaced, but you know, I'm not sure. What I'm going to do, I'm going to find one RAM memory module from my donor boards. I'm going to reball it and place it back here. So we need to find the same brown RAM memory. This one is the Samsung one. Samsung ones are quite good. All right, so this is my scrap board. First, I'm going to check this point. Yeah, like I said, it's, if it's lower than 30 ohms, that means one of the RAM memory is faulty. But in this case, the RAM memory looks good. You know, this motherboard had a problem with the update and done everything what i could to fix it but i ended up with the donor board like this all ram memory modules are in good working condition that's why i left this motherboard all right so let's apply some flux i'm going to remove this one
so we're going to get rid of this motherboard come back later so what we need to do now we just need to reball this now let's clean it apply some fresh flux maybe before i do this i just try to fit my stencil all right i just need to go under the microscope i think but this appeared again all right now it should be right yeah perfect okay so now i'm going to use hot air quickly just a little to make the flux more sticky okay our stencil all right i'm going to use 360 uh, 15 airflow hopefully it will do the job Just need to increase a little bit air. April to 55. All right, so we've got RAM memory module is already rebuilt, as you can see. So now I'm going to attach this back to its place. All right, so let me just quickly have a look from different angle. You know, it has to be positioned in the correct place. All right, so let's use 400 degrees AT airflow, and I'm going to try to attach this. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some power flux. And reflow it one more time. All right, so we are going to put everything back together, and test it a little bit more. all right so i've got my controller so now i'm powering the console on yes the fan is spinning the controller is light up and we've got xbox one green screen on the problem only one game hard drive is five hundred gigs all right so what i'm going to do i'm going just to put one disc in just need to check if it's reading the games and it's reading the games so everything is working properly all right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've just fixed, you know, Xbox One S where the problem was the faulty RAM module. I've replaced that and everything came back to normal. All right, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you next time.